there is always a conflict in the minds of people. If I want to take up to spirituality, then I have to go to a retreat place, maybe an isolated place, maybe a jungle, maybe an ashram, and pursue the path of spirituality. But at the same time, there is a conflict. <clears throat> Already I am married, I have got my children, I have the responsibility to take care of the children, and I have to be in the society. So I cannot take to the path of spirituality. <clears throat> that is the conflict that arises in the minds of many people. The question that Krishna brings about here is that it is not necessary that you have to go to a jungle, you have to go to a retreat, you have to go to home, an isolated place for pursuit of spirituality. You can be very well in the society and you can still pursue the path of spirituality. What is that? How it is to be done? He is the secret that he unravels in this Karma Yoga Shoka Sangraha. Bhagavad Gita gives this time Arjuna asks Krishna, you say that moksha is the highest, samadhi is the best. Therefore, you should advise me not to participate in this war. Rather, you ask me that you go to Himalayas and sit in meditation and seek moksha. Instead of you are telling, no, you have to participate in this war. No. And how it is possible? That's where Krishna unravels the mystery in this Karma Yoga Shloka Sangra. In the schematic, Krishna gives us the secret, the whole secret has been brought forth in this thing. He says that every action we do has to be converted into a yoga. How is it ever possible? Normally we think yoga means you must do samasana, pranayama, mudra, sandha, kriya, and so on. <coughs> but here Krishna is saying, no, every action has to be converted into yoga. How is it ever possible? That is the secret that he unravels. For that, what is to be done? We have to understand how we do our action. What is at the base of doing an action in a particular way? We all do our actions in our own way. So what is the propelling force behind that to do an action in this way or in this way or in this way? That is the one that first we have to understand. We have to understand ourselves. <coughs> he says there are three gunas with which we all are made. Tamas, Rajas and Sattva. We are all combination and combination of these three gunas. Nobody is doing Tamasik, Rajasik or Sattva. Today, fortunately, we have technology, we have science, by which we can find out exactly how much percentage of Tamas I have, Rajas and Sattva I have. There's a questionnaire. You fill it up. It will take 10 minutes for you. And you know, I have got 40 percent Tamas. 50% Rajas, I have only 10% Sattva, I can make up. So this is the first step. So if I am Tamas predominant, how do I do my action? If I am Rajas predominant, how do I do my action? If I essentially Sattva, how do I do my action? Krishna describes that. He says, Tamas is the grasses. In Tamas there is laziness, lethargy, drowsiness, sleepiness, resistance to action. I don't want to do any action, I want to sleep off. Resistance to action is the feature of Tamas. Therefore, people in whom there is Tamas predominance 
always they want to escape action. They should always a supervisor to check whether they are doing that action or not. If the supervisor is not there, these people will go sit in a corner and sleep out and while away their time. Tamas is very, very powerful. We all know the power of Tamas. Especially in the morning, when you have to get up at 4.30, then you know its power. You have put an alarm. Okay. Before the alarm rings, already your inner alarm rings and you wake up. But then they say, anyway, I have to go to class at 5 o'clock, still half an hour is there. Then we sleep for another 20 minutes. So, sleep. But already it's 7.30. That is the power of Tamas. So, what is to be done? Tamas has to be shattered. <coughs> Supposing we have rajas, <coughs> what is rajas? Rajas is to shine. You know. The people who are very rustic, they are full of energy, vitality, dynamism, power, speed. They are go-getters. They are very intelligent, very creative. Give them a job, they are bound to finish that. There is no ambiguity. <coughs> and what motivates them to action? Yet to come in karma, sahankare na vapunaha. That there is always an ambition. I want to become a millionaire. I want to become a millionaire. I want to be the richest person of the world. I want to become a minister. I want to become a prime minister. I want to become the emperor of the whole world. And everybody should hear me. I'm very arrogant. Even the grass should not move before my order. That is Rajasthan language. In Tamas, somehow you are made to work. Then you spend so much of energy to do the work. I give a funny example. To kill a land, you bring a big bulldozer. That is Tamas in Kaji. Whereas in Rajas, very, very intelligent. Just do the action that is needed to get the result. Every moment is very precious for you. If I spend so much of time for this work, what is the return I get? Pratiphala is always in my mind. I don't waste any time. Everything is well focused, planned and done. So what is wrong in that? Krishna says, if you do the action the Rajasik way, Kriyate Bahulaya Samtad Raja Samudaputam, it is going to bring fatigue unto you, it is going to tire you out, and you get into a stressful condition. All the hazards of modern stress, all the modern non-communicable diseases, NCDs, they all belong to this category of prophecy action. And the third is the sattva. Sattva has all the good qualities of rajas. The person who is very sattva predominant is very sharp, intelligent, brilliant, creative, full of energy, vitality, dynamism, everything is there. <coughs> but what is the difference? He is not selfish. He wants to do good for the society, good for the people, good for the family, good for the village, good for the country, good for the world. And as a result, he wants to give and give and give. But in Rajas, he wants to take everything for himself, selfish. Grab, 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 take everything for himself. Don't care for others, cut others, beat others, terrorize others. I want to become a millionaire, billionaire. Good army, everything done. At the root cause for all the scams. But in Sattva, it is the reverse. You take less and less for yourself, more and more for others. Jivane yavat adana sya pradhanam tatodikam. How much you receive from the society, you should be able to give more to the society. You are working in an institution, what is your contribution? You should give more and more contribution to the society. Every day, your whole vision is to give and give and give. Dana. And show love and compassion 
you care for others, serve for others, help others, and see that you contribute more and more to the society. And gradually you take less and less for yourself. This is control over the senses called dhamma. Dhamma in Sanskrit is a beautiful word. Vahirindriya nigraha dhamma. Control over the external senses is called dhamma. So there are three dimensions of sattva. Dana, daya, dhamma. Dana is sharing, giving and giving. Daya is compassion and love. Dhamma is control over the senses. Brought forth in a very nice story for him. Once the Devadas, the Rakshasas and the Manavas, all the three went to the great Lord Vishnu for good advice. Vishnu looks at all these people. He says, Da, Da, Da. Everybody understands. What do the Rakshasas understand? We have become very cruel, terrorists, cut others, beat others, terrorize others. So develop the daya, compassion. What about Devatas? They are all rolling in always wealth, eternity of youth and enjoyment, superstar culture. You are becoming slaves to the external senses. Therefore, dhamma, control over your external senses is important. What about human beings? You people have become very selfish. You don't care for others. And somebody is going, you just don't care and then go away. Therefore, dana, sharing. These are the three dimensions of self. Therefore, there are three gunas with which we all are made. Tamas, Rajas and Sattva. How we do our action depends on which guna predominates at that time. This is what first we have to understand. So once you understand, then you are half the way out. Recognition is half the solution, we say. Then what is to be done? Tamas has to be shattered. Rajas has to be controlled. Sattva has to be promoted. <coughs> so start transforming yourself. I make a resolve. Yes, I am going to change. I am going to change the way I do my actions. I am going to change myself. Tamas, day by day reduce. Rajas, day by day reduce. Sattva, day by day increase. So what we do here in our university, all the students are asked to fill up this VPI, Vedic Personality Inventory, so that everybody will know how much of the month's At the end of the semester, again, you administer that. What has happened? Thomas, which was 40%, has come down to 30%. Rajas, which was 50%, has come down to 30%. Sattva, which was only 10%, has increased to 30%. Yes, you are in the right track. So this is the way the Karma Yoga has to be practiced. Day by day, day by day, there should be a change in our self. This can happen only when we decide, we resolve. We take a resolve that, yes, I am going to change. If I am not going to change, if I don't determine to change, nobody can change us. <clears throat> Even the God himself comes, he also cannot change. So interestingly, in the Mahabharata episode, <coughs> Krishna comes to Bhishma and says, See, this is a great surprise for me. What? See, you are such a great warrior. Bhishma Pitamaha, you are the role model of a person with such strength, such knowledge, such fantastic achievements. And you have tried to make Duryodhana grow, improve. But no. In spite of all training to your has not changed. It's the greatest surprise I see, says Krishna Guru. And Bhishma says, I will be a bigger surprise. <laughs> but even Krishna Guru himself comes to change Duryodhana, Duryodhana doesn't change. <laughs> Therefore, unless we make a resort, we make a determination that we have an ambition that I want to change, nobody can change. Therefore, the first requirement of any yoga is that I want to change. I want to change to become a better person, great human being, super human being, divine human beings. That ambition is the one. There should be the flame of aspiration growing, says Sri Aravindu. 
But once you become in, I want to change what should be done, next step. We have to promote sattva. So what should be done? Simple act. Every day, you start giving something. Dana, sharing. What you have to give? You have money, you got food, you got clothes, you got property, you can share. I don't have anything. What can I do? On a daily basis, what I can do? Krishna is very, very magnanimous. Patram, Pushpam, Palam, Toyam, Yome, Bhaktiya, Prayam, Chati. Yes. A leaf, you are coming there, the beautiful leaves have come down. Flowers have fallen down. Pick up a few fresh flowers, fresh leaf, and give it to someone whom you meet. Maybe your friend, maybe other person whom you meet. Or a fruit. <coughs> Nothing in there, one cup of water. So develop that habit of giving. Every day something should be given. What you give is not that important than how you give that. Therefore, that is a step. That's how the supply is going to grow. Imagine in a society, if all people want to give and give, how wonderful could be the society? Now what has happened? Everybody, people want to take for themselves. Selfish, more and more for me, more and more for me, more and more for me. Now, if the society can change to the subject dimension of dana, <coughs> then you have a role model of a society. A ideal society will be created. This is what we have done in our country. We have built ideal social orders. And we call them such ideal social orders. People used to come from all over the world. So Swami Vivekananda, he gives a clear direction. If I want to change India, if we want to change India, what should be done? India will not be made if India becomes an economic superpower. India will not be made if India becomes a defense superpower. India will not be made if we build big skyscrapers in the biggest building of the world. India will not be made if we have the best of the technology of the world. <clears throat> when will India be made? Take India to its roots. The basic values on which India is made. <coughs> then India will be made. What are those roots? Renunciation and service as the twin ideals of India. That Tyaga and Seva, Dana, Daya, Dhamma are the ideals of India. So install these things in India and India will become great. We have shown that. Great means India was the wealthiest nation, is the richest nation of the world. People used to come to India not for philosophy, not for yoga, but they used to come to see how rich it is. Most people go to America for what purpose? Because there is so much of richness. I can earn hundred thousand dollars a month. You know, I can earn five hundred thousand dollars. You know, oh, I can become very rich. People go to America for that. Similarly, people used to come to India. Because in India, there was so much of richness. People were selling gold, silver, and diamond, and furs, everything in the streets. When they used to come here, they used to get amazed. And everybody used to be so loving, so affectionate, so full of dana, daya, dhamma. And honesty, integrity was so much prevalent here. Then they used to recognize the green land of India. That is India. This is what India we have to make. That was how we gave the clear direction. How to do that? Karma Yoga. Yoga. Yoga has been brought forth. Right from childhood, the children should be taught to give and give and give. Many of you are parents, we have your children. Right from childhood, you develop the habit of giving the sharing with the children. Then you see the children blossoming like wonderful flowers of the whole country. Then the India will be made. Economy should develop. So as students, as faculty, what we can do? Every day, give something. And now with the technology, social media, WhatsApp, and all these things, you share what you need today. One person said, send that I was coming there, 
one of the patients here, the father of the therapy participant, he was unable to walk. So I was sitting in the wheelchair, nobody was there to push. So I went there and took the wheelchair and took him to the destination. Simple act. So spread that. Another person said, I was coming here, there were too much of plastic sheets here and there, here and there. I picked them up and put it in a proper dustbin. Somebody else said, see, there were too much of parthenia weeds that are coming up. You know, this, I just removed that and take care of it. Any act of service you can think of, you know, then it will transform you. That is the first step of karma yoga. Move towards the power. Then, is it the end of the game? As far as the transformation of the country is concerned, this good enough. But for individual, it's not total. You have to go beyond that. Why? Even when you are doing good actions, there can be some conflicts that may arise. This is the opening scenario of Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna gets into such a conflict. He has come with all the determination to take place and win the war as his duty as a Kshatriya. And therefore he asked Krishna, please take me to the forefront. I want to see who are all have joined hands with that treacherous of Duryodhana, who is supporting Duryodhana. I want to see. Krishna nicely drives the chariot to the forefront. And what does Arjuna see? All the hundred Kaurava brothers which he expected. And Duryodhana, the treacherous of a person. Then his arch friend, Karna was there, no surprise. Then it turns here, this is Krupacharya. Huh? Kuru Kuru Krupacharya joined him. Then it turns here, this is Dronacharya. My own teacher, Dronacharya has come here. How come? How come? Then when he sees who is the commander in chief, Vishwamitama himself, the greatest Dhani of the time. Then he gets into a big conflict. Should I kill all these people in the name of war? Or should I do my duty? One thing is telling, Krishna is telling, no, you are a Kshatriya, you have to perform your duty and go ahead and then kill everybody and then win the war. If you don't win the war, if you do, you get this Swarga. Ato va prapsis is Swargam, jitva va bhakshate mahi. This is your duty, you have to do that. Forget about all other things. This other thing, the heart, compassion, love, something, thing. That tells, no, 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 you cannot kill. You cannot kill all your own brothers. You cannot kill your own teacher. And the Dronacharya who made Arjuna, Arjuna, you can't kill them. Come on, no, no, no. He is drawn by compassion, love. Then he says, your thing is the humanitarian consideration. The sacrifice you have to do. And give and give and give you have been telling. And therefore, you have to do this thing, which is better of that to Do you feel better? Uh, ethics and morality is better. Love and compassion. Sacrifice is better or performing duty is the better. He torn across. But the result, he cannot stand in the chariot and his whole body is trembling. Gandhi Vamsan Sade Hasta Prakte Vapai Dakyate Nacha Shakno Mumya Vastham Brahmati Vajame Manaha My mind is full of turmoil. I can't stand. How can I kill these people? Katham Vishnu Maham Sakke Drunan Sabat Sudhana Ishumi Pratiyot Syami Ujjavar Havari Sudhana They are all worth a worship. How can I kill? How can I kill? No, 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 I can't do that. Then the Buddha says, after all, what is going to happen if you win the war? You get the kingdom, you get all the comfort, you got all the wealth, this and that. Then you have become very selfish. Yadraja Sukhano Vena Hantum Sodhana Mudhyata Havaya Shemana, Shemana to get the wealth and the comforts of the kingdom, we are killing our own people. No, no, I should not do that. When he is in a turmoil, he just sits down. That's the opening scenario, a dramatic presentation of a very subtle conflict that arises in lives. Both are suffering. Duty is good and humanitarian consider, which is better of the two. Similarly, there can be a conflict between one duty and another duties. Mahatma Gandhi called for the freedom movement. Lacks of youth joined in the freedom movement. But there was a few people, they were the only son in the family, parents were very old, they were very, very sick. What should I do? Whether I should take care of my parents 
और वो कॉल फॉर ड्यूटी ड्यूटी फॉर द नेशन इज बेटर ड्यूटी फॉर द पेरेंट्स इज बेटर इट इज बेटर मतलब देव वो भाव पितृ देव वो भाव यू से इज इट बेटर दैट आई स्टे इन द हाउस एंड डू दैट और गो फॉर द नेशन वन ड्यूटी मैन टू डू सिमिलरली वन एथिकल नॉर्म अनदर एथिकल नॉर्म सत्य और अहिंसा एंड ए सर्टेन ए ओंकारलिस कम्स अक्रॉस ए पर्सन and in the diagnosis it is clear that he has got cancer but the doctor knows that he is very 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 nervous type of person if he say that he has got cancer then all the possibilities of good success will go away therefore should you tell the truth that you have got cancer and do the operation if he does that then he is going to promote himself he is going to die soon or his surgery is going to be failure What should be done? Whether ahimsa is good or sattya is better. And question is the very basis of ethics and morality. This is what the ancestors have started doing. In the United States, the free society, youth are very brilliant, very sharp. In the Harvard University, there is a biblical class going on, and the professor you would fully brought out the Ten Commandments of Christ, and the students were thrilled. Such examples, such hard play things. Then one of the brilliant student comes up and says, "Sir, I marvel at your oration. Such wonderful examples you have given. It touched our heart. Fantastic. But I have questions, sir. What? Why should I follow the Ten Commandments? If somebody comes and hits me on the left, why should I show the other cheek? Why should I share my good earned money to somebody else?" But it is necessary for my enjoyment. I have earned the right to my way. I should enjoy myself. But you are telling share your wealth with others, Dana. Why? Why? Why this? Ten Commandments. In our country, there is Manu Dharma Shastra. We have got many, many Ten Commandments. Everything is asked by the people. Why should I do that? Why should I do that? Questioning the very basis of ethics and morality. Similarly, questioning the very basis of duty. In the name of duty, you are cutting our freedom. And therefore, why should we do that? Duty for the father, duty for the mother, duty for the parent, duty for the minister, duty for the king. No, 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 no. You are curbing our freedom. We are free society, and we should be free people. So, when such conflict comes, then we are completely torn apart. Krishna says, "Kim karm, kim karm, meeti kavayo pyatra mohita tatte." कर्मणोभव्यम उदाहरण There is non-action lived into our lives. This has to be understood. You must give prominence to that. You must give emphasis on that because akarma is the one that helps to relieve all our stresses. When we do action, whether it's good action or bad action, there is going to be stresses that are going to come up. More and more stresses are going to come up. Therefore, it has to be balanced by non-action. Normally we do that in our deep sleep. Every day going to sleep, eight hours, ten hours, six hours. In which you release all your stress, you recharge your battery, then come back ready for action. Suppose you don't have good sleep, how miserable you will be. Think. Therefore, a karma is important, but you are neglecting the karma. The people who are in action, they say that every day you must practice of yoga. You do deep relaxation and you do good sleep. No, no, I don't have time. I don't have time for doing that. Yoga, one hour of yoga. No, no, I can't do that. I don't have time. So we are all the time immersed in action, 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 action. 
कर्मा कर्मा कर्म कृष्णा से दैट इज द फुलिशनेस दैट यू हैव यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट कंपोनेंट इन योर लाइफ दैट इज कर्मा दैट इज साइलेंसिंग ऑफ द माइंड कॉमिंग ऑफ द माइंड ट्रांसफरिंग ऑफ द माइंड रेस्टिंग गिव डीप रिलैक्सेशन टू बॉडी माइंड कॉम्प्लेक्स दिस सीक्रेट नंबर 1 this should be built every day we get eight stresses imagine hundred units of stress you develop you must release all the hundred units if you don't if you release only 60 another part is going to accumulate accumulate and is going to hit you you have heart attack you have got stroke you have got spondylosis you have got diabetes all the things are going to come therefore you must release all the stresses so what should be done action and non action action and non action to be put forth you have good sleep in the night and you wake up during the day when you stay up you do some yoga practice or shavasana and other release the stresses then the second secret gradually you must see that this become part of your life yoga sthaha kur karmani sangam dekhwa dhandaya karmani akarmaya pashe that all the time in that silence All the time that akarma do your action, yoga sthaha you know, kuru karma, attune to your self, inner layer of the mind has to be completely in that silence and do activities also. This is a very special way of doing. I call it dual mode operation. We all are familiar with the two layers of the mind. You are sitting here and hearing, but something deep within you is bugging you. Oh, my father was admitted to the hospital. What would have happened to him? Tomorrow is going to be his surgery. Whether surgery will be successful, something is going deep inside you. You know that inner layer of the mind. That inner layer of the mind has to be silenced, brought down, tranquil, blissful awareness. Then outside you can be doing any activity. That is the secret of karma yoga. Attune to self, do action. Yoga sthaha kuru karma ani sangam dikwa dhandaya. Then what is the result of that? Simply, simply, you have some bhutva, some of them you have to deal. Then equanimity is going to come up, balance is going to come up, and stress from your stress is going to restore. That imbalance will go away, and you start growing better and better. Then all the subtle stresses also be removed. That is, akarmani karma yak parshe, the deep rooted stresses, phobias, obsession, blocks, obsessions, and everything has to be removed. The deep rooted stress has to be removed, and that's what's going to happen when you continue with the journey of silencing the mind more and more. That will be the state of perfection. These are the secret that Krishna gives to rise to the higher level, to resolve all such conflicts, and says, "Go to the highest height." So what is to be done? Start off the journey by giving and giving. That is dana. That is the first step. Shatter the tamas, control the others, promote sattva. Then you learn to calm down the mind, silence the mind, and balance life with the karma. You must spend time for relaxation, spend time for good sleep. Don't all the time involve in action, action, action. Particularly examination means you leave all your asana, pranayama, mudra, mudra, everything, and you want to study, 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 study. Absolutely wrong. Then what is going to happen? Even sleep you do not do, and you sleep very late, two o'clock, three o'clock, and morning you are all then. And when you go to the examination, you know many things, but you forget because the brain needs rest. The greater rest you give, better will be your examination. This is one thing that the students do not understand. Always study, 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 study. Wrong. You have to give rest to the system. During the examination time, you must sleep more. You must do more of yoga, more of shavasan, more of cyclic meditation, more of pranayam. All these things you have to do. Then all that you have learned is going to come up and you will come out with flying colors. This is application in our daily life. This is how we have to do that. So let us contemplate on these thoughts. So it's right with the eyes closed. Relax all parts of the body from toes to head. Beautiful smile on the face. Take a deep breath and slowly breathe out.
as we breathe out, all the stresses will be released. Deep relaxation comes up. Now calm down the mind. Look at the thoughts. Thoughts come and go, come and go. As you slow down, you'll be able to recognize the gap between the two thoughts, silence between the two thoughts. Karma and karma go on in the mind. Thought comes up, goes away, silence. Then thought comes, goes away, silence. Action is karma, silence is akarma. We lift into our life every moment. Recognize the gap between the two thoughts. Go a little deeper. That silence was there, is there, and will be there. In which thoughts come and go, come and go. That is chitta akasha. Just like the space in which the clouds come and go. The thoughts come and go in the vast, infinite ocean of silence. All pervasive silence. And that silence is bliss. Retaining that blissful awareness, blissful silence, calmness of mind, do all activities. That is the secret of Karma Yoga Krishna leaves. At the course of growth from unreality to reality, from darkness to light, and mortality to immortality, come to Namaskar Mukra. Oh.